direct from Foxborough, Massachusetts, the gem of Norfolk County, and taped at the studios of Foxborough Cable Access. It's Foxborough Central, and here's your host, Bob Hickey. Uh, welcome to another great episode of Foxborough Central. You heard the man. I am Bob Hickey. I am your host, and I am going to share with you some of the fun things interesting things. Well, politics, I don't know if you call it fun, but I do because I'm a political junkie. Uh, the events, people, and organizations that make Foxborough the gem of Norfolk County. Joining me today to do just that, talk a little politics, is our state representative, Jay Barrows. Jay, it's a pleasure having you join us today on Foxborough Central. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me out this morning. And it's always a pleasure to see you, not only you personally, but also that uh, professionally you're not walking with the weight <laughs> of the Republican Party <laughs> upon your shoulders. Yeah, it's been a little tough the last few weeks. The brand hasn't been helped much by <laughs> our uh, friends and comrades in Washington. Well, a national uh, issue is a national issue. Truly, all politics is local, though. And uh, here in Foxborough, you represent us as well as uh, Mansfield and portions of Norton. That's correct. correct. That hasn't changed in the last... Hasn't changed. Not, not in the last gerrymandering, right. not <laughs> representing parts of Randolph and Seek. No, no, I don't have any of that. So we, we're pretty much status quo. Great. And of course, uh, you, you, you're a family man here in Mansfield. Uh, real quick, uh, you and your wife and, and your kids, we see them in the newspaper all the time, but how's yeah, got, everybody doing? Good, good. I've got three of them working uh, at the insurance agency in Mansfield, and uh, we're up to three grandkids, uh, two boys and a little girl, Logan, Luke, and Lucy. We're not sure where the L's are coming from, but uh, <laughs> we love them anyway, so all is well. Thank you. That's great. And of course, since they're doing a great job running the business, that allows you more time to uh, work on our behalf. Right, uh, right. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of things going on on, uh, on Beacon Hill. It's been a fairly productive a uh, few months uh, for our session um, this this term. Well, I was with had the we here at Foxborough Central had the pleasure of uh, speaking with Angela Davis, who is the chair of our local uh, Foxborough Republican Town Committee, and she uh, gave us a, uh, a heads up and a sort of a, a plug out to the local Republicans that you frequently come to their meetings on the third Thursday of every month at the South yep. Foxborough Community Center, and you give a Beacon Hill update. So I'm gonna impose upon you if okay. I could, and I realize that we haven't made the truck down South Street, and there's many uh, good Democrats and many more uh, good independent voters out there. Can you give us a Beacon Hill update? Sure, should be happy to. Uh, as many folks probably have heard and, and seen uh, on TV and radio news, um, we recently appealed the uh, computer tech tax, um, which was something that was near and dear to my heart uh, as, as a Republican, as a member of the minority party. Uh, we were very concerned Meaning back. that you wanted it. No, 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 that we didn't want it. And um, for those of you at home, the, uh, the tech tax was essentially an imposition of a tax on technical support. Technical and support and services and software and basically anything to do with a computer. Uh, web hosting, uh, and that was one of the challenges of this bill. The governor, uh, back in uh, January, when he submitted his bill, his, his uh, budget, uh, he was looking for a $1.9 billion increase in taxes, and it included um, uh, a huge gas tax. $1.9 billion. Billion with a B. Billion with a B. Excuse um, me. <laughs> okay, I'm back. He, he, thank you. I did more than that. Um, <laughs> but he... Uh, in his wisdom, he thought we needed the money. And, you know, again, uh, looking at it as a small business person, somebody in a community that uh, everybody gets up and goes to work every day uh, in a very hard way and, and very conservative in, in their budgeting and their finances, uh, I just looked at it, this is ludicrous. Um, but hidden within that gem uh, was a tax on computer services. So uh, an internet hosting company would now tax the local bank that has a website that you can do your money transfers uh, 24 Ooh. hours a day, 6.25%. Uh, it was expected to raise $166 million, when in fact, when it was all said and done, it looked more like it was going to be about a $500 million uh, impact to the bottom line, far more than what anybody had expected. But the, the frustration was there's 123 folks that voted for it, mm -hmm. to support it. Uh, and it wasn't until the Republicans stood up, we began with some forums around the state. Uh, we had held one in Mansfield, we had a number of people from our local communities come and speak on behalf of what they do and, and the impact it would have. And it was clear that it was a job killer, absolutely clear that it was a job killer. 
And I think if, if anybody sat down to write a, a, a bill or tax legislation, we would put a, a, a stake in the heart of an industry that has really kept Massachusetts alive during these difficult times, mm -hmm. uh, it would have been that one. Couldn't have, you couldn't have done worse. We're rated 47th uh, in business uh, friendliness throughout the uh, United States. Um, I'd like to see us in the top 10. Yeah, we certainly don't want to go back to the tax of Massachusetts days exactly. where we were viewed as any place but. Exactly. When you're deciding to locate your business. Or, exactly. Yeah. And we work too hard. As you know, uh, the area here, uh, Meditech come in with 600 employees, so Covidian with mm -hmm. 15, 1,600 folks. And Invensys um, being Invensus a huge player Stan, here in town. Invensys huge player, 1,200 employees, spending $30 million. I mean, and then the retail growth up in Route Patriots 1. Place, yep. Um, we are in a phenomenal area, very phenomenal area. So it would have been, it would have been detrimental to us in our continued quest to grow. Uh, and suddenly the governor had an epiphany and said, oh, what a bad idea this was. And so uh, my colleagues, with all but one, voted to repeal the tax. That is a, what's the word I'm looking for? That is an interesting way to show that Beacon Hill does work. Right. And with a one, and I don't think I'm speaking out of turn here, but there's a, pretty uh, significant body, a book of work that shows that we're really a one-party system Correct. here, uh, overwhelmingly Democrat. And it's not necessarily even that, and I'll admit I'm a Reagan Republican, but um, that if it was all Republican, it would be the same argument on the other side. You really can't have a, um, a strong organization if you only have one point of view. So Correct. what you're saying is that okay, the initial vote went against people who didn't want this tax, but through some additional work, uh, the message was out there, education occurred, and people on both sides of the aisle recognized that this was a bad idea. Right. So it does work, and so your voice is a significant voice up there, even though you're a dreaded Republican. Right. Well, I think different than our colleagues in, in Washington, and, and the only comparison I'll make is, is that as a Republican in Massachusetts, being one of 160 total members in the House, mm -hmm. there are 29 Republicans. My job, at least my, the perception of what I'm supposed to do, is make a bad bill a little less bad. I can't stand on my laurels and kick sand in their face every single day sure. about all the crazy things that get done, but I can work with them in an attempt to try to persuade, change, adjust, make it a little less bad, whatever we're trying to do. And I think we've been successful at that. And quite frankly, as a member of the Republican Party, the minority party, we're gonna see credit for really stopping that bad bill because I think it would have had a detrimental effect on not only the business community, but the employees as well. The mm -hmm. money's gotta come from somewhere. Um, we've seen it with the uh, tax on durable medical equipment. We're a big medical equipment provider down in this area. Um, and the companies have, have gone back and forth with Congress to try to get that piece repealed, the 2% tax repealed, out of Obamacare. And they've been unsuccessful because there were a group of Republicans and there were a group of Democrats that refuse to change anything because it doesn't meet the right and it doesn't meet the, mm -hmm. the left, it didn't go far enough. So what we've got is absolute gridlock. We're in Massachusetts. Uh, agree or disagree, we are getting some things done. Mm -hmm. uh, coming up uh, down the pike, we've got a welfare reform bill. Now, the Republicans have had that conversation for 25, 30 years on uh, EBT, uh, on, on the different benefits and the way that they're administered. Um, you know, some simple, simple uh, ways of tightening up the system a bit so that it ensures that those that need the benefits are those that are receiving them. Um, I've suggested to some as kind of a joke, can you imagine if we put the Registry of Motor Vehicles in charge of EBT benefits and we put the EBT folks in charge of Registry of Motor Vehicles, <laughs> we'd all get a title in our plate and, and, and the benefits would be truly administrated in a way that uh, is appropriate. But um, we, we're working on that and we're all working on that. That isn't a single issue of one individual mm -hmm. uh, within, within the body, but everyone is pitching in to try to come up with some simple ways some easy ways to ensure that those that are most in need receive benefits. I don't want to see kids go hungry. I don't want to see people you know, thrown out of uh, uh, subsidized housing. I want to see it administered correct. And it, it, it disturbs me and many others uh, when we see the just craziness on how some of these benefits are distributed and uh, so forth. So we're working on that. That's coming up. And again, I'm here with Jay Burrows, who is our representative at the State House. 
serving, uh, now you're going into your seventh year, correct? Yeah, I'm in my seventh year. You're That's in your correct. seventh yeah, year. Yeah. Uh, so a, a, a phenomenal run of service to us and the community who appreciate the work that you do on our behalf. But you're very well versed, obviously, in, in what is going on on Beacon Hill right now. What, in addition to taxes, and I, I, I don't mean to diminish the impact of taxes because it's huge as far as, as you mentioned, job uh, loss with increased taxes, but just the ability of government to create a need and then create a way to pay the created need, everything escalates. And so when there's a cut, is it really a cut or is it just a reduction right, right, in the increase? Right. So we'll get into that discussion some other day, maybe. Mm -hmm. What are some of the initiatives that you're working on right now that you'd like to share? Well, we've been uh, involved, obviously, with the health care. Um, trying to get control, cost containment back into the, into the mix. Uh, it's a very difficult time right now with Obamacare kicking in on January 1. And Obamacare trumps Romney care. Exactly. And no one understands that. And it's very frustrating in that we, like Lemons, just voted to support Obamacare when Massachusetts, who, who quite frankly, we have one of the best systems in the country. We do. Mm -hmm. And we keep hearing that Obamacare was modeled after Massachusetts. Had we stuck with our guns and said to the Obama administration, as opposed to being joined at the hip on many things, said to them, look it, we're fine. 97% of our folks are covered by health care. It's provided through the private sector, the Blue Crosses, the Tufts, the Harvards, neighborhood health plan. We're all set. We've got a subsidy in place that's not killing the budget. We've heard many times over that it's about one, one and a half percent of our annual budget that we use to, 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 to put towards this. And that we've passed a couple of rounds of legislation to put some cost containment in. Mm -hmm. Leave us alone. But instead, the governor of Massachusetts refused to apply pressure, and he has the political connections to do it, to, to Sebelius, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, to say, give us a waiver. Many other states were granted waivers. They were granted waivers. Exactly, and we weren't. And so now we're taking- Even though we're the model for we're the, the model. national- We are the best. And in fact, we are, are the benefit levels that we provide for all folks that are covered are much more significant than Obamacare. The subsidies that we do are done in a more creative way. The way we rate group insurance in Massachusetts is far more um, effective for industry and age and demographic than Obamacare. And so what's going to happen in January when people, if they ever get the system straightened out to, 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 to help people Even navigate. If anybody can actually log on. Yeah, exactly. If anybody can log on. 30 <laughs> not, million people. Not knowing when you're watching this, folks, and granted, everything uh, is, is, is relative to today. But today, there's a situation where 30 million people. 30 million people eligible for this. 476,000 have been able to successfully get through. I can't do the math, but 476. <laughs> 76 <laughs> over 30 million is um, not very many. Not very many. Not very many. And I can't imagine, as uh, Senator John McCain said, fly a big plane out to Silicon Valley, load it up with smart people, and bring them back and fix the thing. <laughs> but it was a no-bid contract, a Canadian company, and here we have something that, what can the government do right when given the opportunity? And quite frankly, not much. Um, big disappointment, and the money that's, that's being a, spent is hard. That's a huge issue in here, because right now, also, again, not knowing when you're watching this, and of course, you're always able to get this program again at www.fcatv.org. Log on our website and check out the tab under Foxborough Central, and you can see this and all of our other archive shows from Foxborough Central. Locally, we have the unemployment uh, benefits website that is having huge issues from a contract. Uh, some would say no bid. Some would say that uh, a, um, well, I'm not even going to say it because I don't want to expose us to liability, but there's, there's uh, uh, many who believe that this was a no bid contract, and the website is just unable to process correctly 100% of the time. 95% uh, of the time? We, I, I don't know what the number is. All I know is we are, in a, my district, um, we're fortunate. You know, our unemployment rate is less than the state average. It's been pretty consistent, uh, and we work with folks when they have hiccups mm -hmm. on, on, on their benefits and their status. And we were flooded with calls uh, throughout the entire summer really? from July 1 that folks that were, were clearly uh, uh, um, unemployed, uh, clearly they'd done everything right, had applied correctly, done it online, did everything they were supposed to do, we were waiting weeks 
before they heard any confirmation. And we would get, we wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if we get five, six, seven calls a day, which really? for us, that's a lot. That's really a lot for that issue. So it was horrifying. And my point of bringing that up is not a knock on the State Department of Transitional Assistance, but it's a knock on uh, anybody who thinks that if you have something that's working and then you say, well, okay, it's working great, but we're gonna go ahead and do it another way because we want to support political support. I mean, I, I'm not really sure I would understand why our local, or local, I say state, our state um, uh, system of, of Romney care was, or is in the process of being, scrapped to go to a national model. Many of us who were states' rights advocates would, would say, why would you ever go federal when you can do it state? Right. As I would say, why would you ever go state if you can do it local? So, right. Right. Uh, you know, the, the whole concept is, is a screwy one as far as giving away your rights and giving away your ownership for a allegedly a broader cause, but in this case, clearly, it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be trouble for right. Massachusetts residents. Yeah, it, it, people are going to be very very upset. And again, they haven't figured it out. Actually, this weekend was the first notice that came out of the connector, if you will, for people on um, Mass Health subsidized mm -hmm. uh, coverage or individuals that purchased it through the connector because they had no eligibility elsewhere. So this was the first weekend that we got it out into Massachusetts. Now this is the third week of October. People have to make up their mind because coverage for them that is existing through the Romney care, if you will, yeah. um, needs to be converted and changed for January 1. Well, we did one the other day for a, for a client and you know, again, somebody, it said, somebody will get back to you. This is a one at a time deal. You know, every individual is needs to individually apply, individually be coached to get through the system. And uh, I don't think the federal government had any idea what it's like to bring 30 million people uh, onto a system. It's not just like easy. And so we'll see what happens. I've seen a copy of the training manual, and I would agree with that. <laughs> I would agree with that. Uh, it was, it was. I was trying to uh, help out with a PowerPoint presentation, and it was, it was confusing. Oh my so. gosh, it's terrible. So well, anyway, we'll see. Good luck. So you know, and I apologize in advance. We only have a half an hour, and I have so many things I want to talk to you okay, about. Okay, sure. What else is going on? Well, we've got uh, interesting because we've been working on it a long time here in our district. Uh, the Senate President. Again? Yep. has offered a water and sewer I was hoping we were going to talk right, about water right. and sewer. So back to the sewer. Um, so we are uh, we're hoping that that will free up some bond money, again, to help us get financing. We're very, very close, as I probably said for the last five years, um, on bringing a regional uh, sewer district together. Um, the legislation's in place. The agreement has been drafted uh, and down right down to the dot in the I's and crossing the T's. Okay. The three communities are in agreement. Uh, we just need to execute. Three communities are Foxborough, Mansfield, and, and Norton. Norton. Correct, correct. With Easton partnering uh, off of uh, 106, okay. uh, down where the target is built, that they'll be a customer uh, of that district as well. So truly a, and, and we go into Sharon uh, with it as well. Okay. Um, so truly a five communities working together to address uh, a, a much needed service. Uh, we hope here in, in, in downtown Foxborough that we'll immediately pick up additional flow uh, for some of the businesses along Central Street yeah. um, and Main. And then um, as we work our way further towards Mansfield, um, the industrial park, We'll pick up additional flow. Well, that'll so. be a huge boost to not only business owners but also the residences where the owners of, of these, particularly older homes here in the center of Fox, but I know Mansfield has the same situation. Uh, homes that are not on uh, sewerage but are having failing septic systems and essentially become a huge uh, issue because you know, we're, we're built on a, on a foundation of, of granite Rock. and lead right, here. Right, right, right. Uh, and, and so just dropping a septic system is not the easiest proposition, particularly right. for some of us who have properties that are not uh, constructed uh, in a, an acute subdivision way. Correct, uh, correct. Yeah, you don't, have a lot of, you don't have a lot of ground area underneath. So we're hoping that, that we'll get this thing done. I know there's a town meeting article around the sewer district to be created in Foxborough. That's coming up on the 5th of November. September. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> What do we do? <laughs> Special town meeting, yes. 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 Uh, coming up in November, yes. Uh, so, so that's going to be addressed there. Um, Norton is working on, on theirs. Mansfield, of course, is ready uh, and working to get some preliminary study done on design. So we'll, we'll get there. It's, about a th it's a big project. It's about $30 million, maybe even more. Well, it is a huge project. Flow. And uh, part of that involves, and correct me if I'm wrong, I know that I was... Uh, voted out of Selectman in 2008, but I remember back then working uh, to uh, get all the pieces together as far as the intermunicipal agreement. But 
one of the issues is that due to the regulations, state regulations, there's a need to return flow back to the host community from which it uh, was pulled. So if water is pulled from Foxborough, it's supposed to essentially be returned to Foxborough, although a geographic line has nothing to do with the political line. And right, so right, right. Uh, understanding the rationale behind it is easy, but understanding the science behind it, it was a little wishy-washy. Right. And so this is helping to correct or to relieve. Yeah, that we were able to get um, we were able to get relief from that requirement because what when we studied this and this was one of the ideas all along was we're all uh, uh, tied very closely to the Canoe River Aquifer, whether mm -hmm. it's Foxborough, Mansfield, or Norton, and that I think it was 97 or 98 percent of our water uh, that we consume is from that aquifer, and the Duponset is the other two and a half right. or three up on the north end of uh, Foxborough. So it was clear to pump it all back when it comes out of the same place. It's like moving water from this side of the bowl to this side of the bowl, it's the same bowl. Mm -hmm. um, so fortunately, early on, and we thought that was going to be a pretty steep hurdle, but early on we were able to get uh, a waiver to that. Because the science supported Exactly, that. exactly. And uh, a lot of good people spent a lot of hours uh, just you know, making sure that that was correct. Because and, um, in, in Foxborough, and I don't mean to interrupt my fault, sure. but uh, for folks, if, if you are looking at a map and take away the political boundaries and just call us where we are, Along the northern stretch, there's a sort of a divider line, and that aquifer supplies water, which then gets pumped out, but the rest of the Foxborough is on the Canoe River aquifer. Correct. And so water coming out doesn't just stop in Foxborough. We're continuing on to Mansfield and Norton, so whatever's dumped back in is essentially in the same aquifer. Correct. Okay. Correct. So, so that been was some a big confusion out there. I hope this right. program, if nothing else, is able to explain <laughs> that. Well, the good news is that that reduced the cost by, it prohibitive. It would have been prohibitive to do anything. Because we're regional. talking about just an eighteen million dollar uh, pump back right. during one of the original proposals. Which you know, if if I were the guy writing the check, I'd say, okay, get it down to County Street. <laughs> That's right, and then we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna, right. pump it all back right. just right across the border. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and and Mansfield have would have you know, dumped, dumped theirs at the airport right next to uh, Norton. So it was I'm crazy. probably boring everybody at home, and I, I, I recognize completely this is something that I find interesting. I don't know if you do, but hey, this is a good conversation. But thank you for taking the time. <laughs> oh, no problem. I promise we're not going to talk about water the entire time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I'll tell you, water and sewer are honestly very critical to civilization, quite frankly. The Romans figured this out a couple thousand years ago. And, um, and we unfortunately, don't... their systems still <laughs> stay. They still work. Our clay pipes are breaking, but there's... Well, we need to definitely... Just ask anybody uh, down Cocasa Street here. And yeah, exactly. Not a knock on the water, folks. I'm sorry. I apologize. Well, it's interesting, but we're going to get it done, and I think that's going to make our, 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 our community stronger, uh, more poised for growth. Uh, and in sustainable growth, mm -hmm. and also good water. I mean, it's important that we, and we've spent millions of dollars um, in treating and trying to get the manganese and all the other yep. stuff uh, clear so that we don't have brown water, and it's, it's an important piece. And I think we get up in the morning, we turn, turn the faucet on and we flush, and we think everything goes away. There's a lot of stuff behind that. It's critical, critical. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes. But, uh, so the, the Senate president is going to push that. That's kind of her final okay. legacy, if you will, the, the water and infrastructure bond bill. Um, so we'll see what that's. Now it's in committee, and it's, it's moving its way along. So we'll get a look at that. Um, so what I'm going to do now go is, uh, and again, I'm speaking with Jay Barris, who is our representative at the State House, uh, serves the Mansfield, Foxborough, and a portion of Norton. Correct. Uh, we are always... Uh, blessed to have uh, our local representatives come down and take some time to talk to us. Jay, I've known you for many, 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 many years, and uh, your, your role on the Tritown Chamber of Commerce, your uh, role as a leading business uh, and, and, and with Barra's Insurance, but also, you used to be a JC. Yes. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an old JC myself, but yeah. you were a Mansfield JC back in the day. Yeah. Uh, and so, community service, that's is, what is we were in, taught. We were taught that early. That's right. Yeah. Government, should be, <laughs> government should be of laws rather than of men. Correct. Correct. Uh, and service to humanity is the best work of life. Huh. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Good job. Uh, I did not embarrass you by trying to make you recite it no, after that's, 30 that's years. No, okay. so, that's, uh, that's okay. It's probably back there somewhere. But uh, many of the things you do and the reasons why you do this are um, community service. And, uh, you know, I, 
people make fun of certain uh, politicians do this and do that. But in reality, a Massachusetts state house member is not paid a gazillion dollars. And a lot of the work you do back here uh, is not a, a for-profit type of endeavor. You, I suspect you're making more money running a very successful insurance agency yeah. than you are serving as our representative. So let's get to the public service piece of it right now. What is really moving you right now? What, is, what are some of the things that you're working on, or is there something going on that kind of is moving your boat right now? Well, we, we excuse me, we, um, fortunately, uh, just three or four weeks ago, we, we met uh, two young ladies from Foxborough, two Foxborough graduates, uh, Amanda Dickerman and Lauren Apoludis, and they had teamed up and created a um, organization to try to, to, try to help uh, deploy troops. Uh, we have a short memory in this country about how many folks are overseas. Unfortunately, you're correct. We really, we really, really do. And um, so they're working on, and, and we kind of partnered with them, our insurance agency and, and our staff at, at the office, partnered with them to help collect care package um, material okay. to have it shipped overseas. And, and, and both uh, Amanda and Lauren have been very busy with their young friends, and they're in their early 20s. And so it's that community service piece, it's nice to see it passed down. Um, that was really what caught my eye with these two young ladies. And in fact, I remember the, uh, um, uh, Amanda when she was a little three-year-old at the YMCA <laughs> that we opened in Mansfield back in 97 that spurred into turning into the Foxboro Street. it been that Street. Long? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, in Foxboro, we're going to be celebrating um, uh, in November our fifth year here with a full facility with the help of uh, Invincis and the craft organization. Right. So, and then you know, Spears see, family. See, yeah, Spears Absolutely. as well. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. But so all that, but to see these two young ladies, so we held a, Last week, uh, on a Saturday, we held a drive, collected a bunch of, uh, of stuff, and so we've been out looking now to secure some funding for shipping the stuff. And I had a call on Friday, somebody's willing to step up and help with the, with the mailing of all stuff. So to see these uh, two young ladies, again, both Foxborough grads, connected with some family members who've served uh, over the course of many years. I mean, when you think about Back in the Bush administration, we went to Iraq the first time. Yeah, and um, war, of Af war in Afghanistan is entering its 11th year. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, so to see them step up and do that. So we've been working on that. Um, on um, uh, Coming up this weekend, we've got a Halloween parade that we, we walk in. Uh, Representative Howitt and I will be uh, in Norton um, passing out candy on the two, two, two and a half mile trek down 123 with thousands of little kids. Uh, who just have a great time, and, and Norton is doing a good job with that. And Sunday, there's a Halloween parade in, in Mansfield. Um, we're busy uh, working with the three communities. And in Foxborough, we have one on the common. That's right. Sponsored by our common. recreation department. Good, good, good. <laughs> um, in, um, with, with our three communities, Norton, Mansfield, and Foxborough, we're working collaboratively to form a regional STEM symposium. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math for our fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students. Really? And we will be holding that in June of 2014. We have secured Wheaton College, their science building, which has recently been built, it's about two yes. years old. They spent, I don't know, 50, 60 million dollars. They're gonna have, uh, we're gonna have area companies be exhibitors to talk about the science, the technology, the engineering, the math, art, the whole bit, because it calls something called STEAM. Um, and, we're going to, and we've got kids coming from fourth, fifth, and sixth grade from each of the three communities. We'll spend a day. What an interesting age yeah. grouping. Oh, it's, well, it's, they're sponges, yeah. you know, and um, they will see uh, some perhaps for the first time to understand all that math that they're doing in school, what it How ties applies. to, you know, and see what the end product. So we've teamed up with a number of area, and Vincis has been phenomenal. Um, Toyota, Covidian, many, many companies. Uh, Meditech will be there. Many will be there with their exhibits showing these students uh, what they do. Because we've got a, a, a gap mm -hmm. um, in that folks being trained and going into those uh, fields um, hasn't been happening as much as it should. And it's those are the job opportunities that we have. And in this area, wouldn't it be cool to get your kids to live near you and get a job in the area as opposed to, gee, dad, I got to go to Chicago to land this sure. job, or Houston, or uh, and, and Austin. And oftentimes, you know. and I love the age group, because oftentimes it's not a matter, you say they're sponges, but also it's what is 
exposure. And what, what do they see as being something fun, exciting, interesting? Uh, and, and to do that at such a young age, oh, that, that gives it's them great. an opening as far as, hey, wow, this is cool. Right. And, and, then, and, and, and they and, carry it forward. And what I'm proud of is the fact that we've been able to bring the three communities together. And the kids play each other in soccer or in basketball or in football. And they're young, and so they'll get to, to, to mix with the other kids because, you know, if you're a little kid from Norton, Foxborough's a long way away. Mm -hmm. Or if you're a kid from Mansfield, you know, maybe you've never been to Norton. So it's kind of cool to bring them together like that in big pack, and um, thank goodness for Wheaton College, you know, stepping up and recognizing it. And again, well, they are a hidden gem here. Exactly. Tritown Chamber of Commerce, with its membership, has stepped forward. Uh, they're at every meeting. Uh, we've got people that are willing to help and assist. So um, that stuff is really, uh, really important to me and to see that our schools are connected and we can share ideas and resources. Representative Jay Barrows, I know this is going to be a shock to you, but we've already gone through our entire half hour. Okay. I'm going to give you the last word in a minute. I know that people can get a hold of you by going to www.mass.gov and clicking links to get to your address. Is there a way to get in touch with you easier? Sure. You can call on the phone, 617-722-722. Uh, 2488. That's probably the easiest way. If we can't pick up, leave us a voicemail message and we'll, we'll get right back to you as quickly as possible. Mass.gov, you can just click on my name and it goes right to email. And I got to tell you, whenever I've tried to get a hold of my representative, I've always been able to do so, so I know you're very easy to get in Great. touch with. Thanks. Jay, I'm going to give you the last word. Well, just thank you for having me uh, today and, and I appreciate your work and I appreciate the work that uh, Foxborough Cable Access does because it's an important piece to communicate to the community. So keep it's, up the good job. It's easy for us old JCs, right? There you go. Thank you. <laughs> All right. The music is already playing. I know I'm out of time. I hope you have a great day, Foxborough. Take care, everybody. Good job.